Om Tat Sat, Hari Bol, Hare Krishna. Welcome to everybody. Very happy to be here with all of you. Uh, today's session, I've been asked to speak to you about affection and attachment. I'm sure all of you would find that an interesting word, also an interesting function of the human species. Uh, how many of you here, how many of you here have experiences that are very vital to your life on investment of affection? You can raise your hands and say, or your digital hand, uh, how many of you here have vital experience about investment of your affection? I'll rephrase that if you want. How many of you here have a moving, deep, intense experience about your affection, your investment in it or not? You invested your affection in somebody and you were, you know, challenged in many different ways or you enjoyed that investment. Any one of these things. I'm just waking you up. How many of you? Well, I see only a few hands up, so... Uh, I presume that others are not human beings. Should I? <laughs> of course, I think you don't understand the question. Every one of us has got some experience of this uh, situation. So, it's okay, thank you. Uh, coming to the point, I'll briefly touch today about some overview on this aspect. So I will discuss briefly today, we will just discuss very briefly. This is not, this is not a topic strange to anybody. Uh, all of us are reveling in it or wallowing in it or rolling in it. Otherwise we wouldn't be the human beings that we are. And if we aren't doing it, maybe we are having challenges with our own humanity and expression of it. So, I will just briefly touch upon some aspects. What is the definition of affection that you would give? Although you have expressed yourself, what is a simple definition of affection that you would give? Anybody wants to go for it? Like I said, I'd like to wake you up a little bit. What's this? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, this answer is Lalita, Preeti, Mai, and uh, Lokeshwari, and Mahashunga. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisances. Uh, affection is like the way of showing our love towards others okay. through the means, like through the action. Okay, thank you. Yes, Lokeshwari Radha. Um, Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranam Maharaj. So affection is uh, uh, deeply thinking about the other person and uh, uh, what is it? Recognizing their needs and serving them so nicely. Okay, so, very nice, very nice. Thank you, Mahashinga Prabhu. Maharaj, please accept my emotions. This is like, like uh, one minute. Right? Uh, it is the love, concern care uh, for a uh, particular person. Okay. How to express that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anarpita Kripamayi Das. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, affection is a stage after the attachment. We have attachment for uh, those uh, we show our affection for them in a 
our different different uh, action and by our different different emotions aha uh -huh. that's an interesting one thank you thank you right one more question do you have affection for things or do you have affection for conscious beings yes maharaj yes you have affection for what do you have affection for things you have affection for your mobile phone do you have affection for your computer your laptop do you have affection for attachment your... only not affection attachment are uh -huh. they aha uh aha -huh. yes lokeshwari um it is like attachment only maharaj not you affection don't... yeah you don't have affection for things right yeah mahashringa you don't have affection for things no affection it is uh, it may be attachment but no affection no uh -huh. affection okay there you have made out some some difference right so i am going to just dwell a little bit once you have defined what it possibly could be we have some sort of a big understanding i am going to speak a little bit to you about managing your affection and a little bit of the difference between affection and attachment and then later talk about some higher taste but let's just get into discussion of affection with one case history i want to talk about affection after your definition there are different case histories that we can take from the shrimad bhagavatam but i am choosing bharat maharaja's affection for the deer as a very very wonderful poignant instance in the bhagavat you know bharat maharaj he came to the forest just to recollect the to recollect the history to you briefly bharat maharaj came to the forest जो दुष्टजान दारसूतान सुखरुद्राज्यम हृदय स्पृश है जुहो युवैव मलवत उत्तम श्लोक लालसा द भागवतम सेज दैट ही गेव अवे दुष्टजान मीन त्यजा मींस टू गिव अप दारसूतान दारा मींस वाइफ सूतान मींस हिज चिल्ड्रन एंड रिलेटिव्स सुखरुद्राज्यम ऑल हिज फ्रेंड्स सुखरुद राज्य मींस द होल किंगडम hridi sprasha hai all that was very dear to his heart he simply gave it and what was his feeling towards this juho yuvaiv malavat just like you pass stool and walk away with absolutely no attachment or affection or anything towards it mala means stool juho yuvaiv malavat uttama shloka lalasa because of his affection and love for the supreme personality of god it he left all these things and he went to the forest the great king after whom india is named bharat varsha the name india is actually name given by the colonizing britishers and others originally ilavrta varsha bharat varsha bhagavatam prabhupad explains that uh, it was called earlier and it was later called bharat varsha so he came after doing all these amazing giving up of affection attachments and he comes to the forest and he is meditating and he is doing wonderfully there he is in the stage of bhava and he lands up watching this dear small just delivered baby i think you know the story so i won't go into the details he floating in the river after his mother is her mother is delivered and he goes and picks up the deer he pays attention to it as a human being he should when you watch some life in danger when you see that you could do something every natural human being would reach out anybody would reach out when the animals reach out to help each other 
So it's such a natural feeling. He reached out and he picked up the deer and brought it to the ashram. And lo and behold, the deer was not ordinary deer. It was actually a deer set up specifically for Bharat Maharaj. Little did he know that. But it was so soft and so subtle on a very subtle platform. So he paid attention. And then at first, it's mentioned that before that, he felt compassion. Like you see here, it's mentioned. Um, I'll ask uh, Ambika Devi Dasi, would you like to read what's on the screen? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank Hare you very Lord. much. Mm. So Parata rescues the deer. After Parata Maharaj took his morning bath in the river Gandagi, he sat on the bank to chant his mantra and he saw a doe coming to drink from the river. Just then there was a, a tumultuous uh, row on a lion and the doe being frightened, immediately leaped across the river. As it jumped, a baby deer fell from its womb and was left floating down the river. The mother doe was so frightened and disturbed by her miscarriage that she fell into a cave and died. Having witnessed this, Parat Maharaj felt great compassion for the baby deer he rescued it from the waves and brought it to his residence. Summarized from Shimap Bhagavatam 5, 8, 1 to 7. Thank you, Ambika. Right. So the feeling here he had was compassion. Okay. He had compassion and then he saved the deer. And then he brought it to his ashram. And he felt that this deer has lost its mother. I have to take care of it. And he did everything that is necessary. One has to pay attention. And naturally, one will do that. And then you see, after that, it said, he kept the deer comfortable and petted it and dealt with it affectionately. His compassion and his attention for the deer and tending to the deer resulted in affection. It was in a very preliminary stage. It says he patted it. He petted it, he patted it nicely. Okay? Yeah, Mahashringa, would you like to read that? Maharaj Mar 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 Maharaj Bharat felt great compassion for the young deer who had just lost his mother, its mother, and he took it with him and cared for it. One minute, Maharaj, I have to switch off the other mobile. Sorry. He fed the deer grass, made sure to protect it from tigers. Shinga Prabhu, you are locked down on two devices or something. We can't hear yeah, from exactly. either echo. Please do that. Yes, I did that. Thank you. Uh, he fed the deer grass, made sure to protect it from tigers and other dangers. Always kept it comfortable and petted it affectionately. He became so absorbed in taking care of the deer that after only a few days, he forgot everything about his spiritual advancement and forgot to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Taken from Srimad Bhagavatam 5.8728. Thank you. So you can see that his compassion and his attention for the deer has developed into affection. And that affection has deepened to such a way that he has forgotten his spiritual practice. And it says that just within only a few days it happened. It built very fast. And that object of affection that's standing in front of him, the deer, 
is able to take the attention of Bharata Maharaj to such a great extent that he can give up his spiritual practices and forget everything. Look at the power of affection. It can even completely upset your spiritual practice. After you have given up all types of affections and attachments and come to do that, just a deer can very innocently get into your life, very insidiously enter your life, and then completely seek your attention. Okay? So this is a very classic case of affection in a particular way. Now let me stop here and ask you, Affection, is it cultivated or is it spontaneous? Affection, is it cultivated? Means it has to be cultivated to grow and become something. Or is it spontaneous? It just comes like that. Yeah, go ahead. Sanchi Agrawal. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. It's cultivated. It's cultivated. Aha. Uh -huh. So let me ask you a question, Sanchi. It's cultivated. So when you have a child, are you a mother, Sanchi? No, Maharaj. I am a student. I just completed okay. my study. Okay. Let's say that somebody is a mother. One of you definitely are. Some of you are. So uh, do you have to cultivate affection with the child? <clears throat> no, Maharaj. She is born. Being a mother, I don't think so. It's cultivated. It's, it's spontaneous, yes, isn't it's, it? Yeah. Exactly. So there are. Let's say there are two. Okay. Let me go ahead. Lokeshwari, what do you want to say? Thank you, Sanchi. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. So uh, sometimes it will be like, uh, as you said, uh, mother and children, it is a spontaneous and uh, gradually uh, even along uh, among with, uh, in them also, it is a continuous attachment mother and uh, spontaneous also. And in some cases out of compassion, as you said in Bhartamara's story, it arises like a uh, uh, continuous uh, effort. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mahashringa Prabhu? Maharaj, it is uh, uh, spontaneous as well as it has to be cultivated. This okay. is a quality which requires uh, regular practice. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. What is happening here, what is happening here to Bharata Maharaj is it's not that he is purposely cultivating his affection with an intention of cultivating his affection. Actually, he, his affection is growing on its own because of his indulgence in the deer. So even if you did not want, your affection will grow. Why? Because your affection actually gets to be attachment. First, Compassion, in the case of Bharata Maharaj, and then affection. And then if you don't manage it, it grows into attachment. And not ordinary attachment. It grows into attachment that can completely take over your life. In the case of Bharata Maharaj, he could not do his regular spiritual activities because of the deer and the, whenever it distracted him he paid attention to the deer he happily paid attention to the deer forgetting his other devotional service activities right uh, and then as he did that more and more he became mad with attachment from affection to attachment his attachment was so mad, the Bhagavatam describes that he was like praying to the Lord, where is the deer? I mean, just got lost a little bit somewhere. And so he was singing glories of the deer. He was singing glories of the earth planet which is having the footprints of the deer. How fortunate is the earth planet 
that it has got footprints of my dear. It was going crazy. It's mentioned that he became mad with attachment for the deer. So what affection can do to you if you did not manage it? What affection can do to you if you did not manage it? Especially some of them who could be highly emotional. Say women folk, normally a little more emotionally oriented as a design, as a necessity. They have children and they have to spawn their children with affection and love. Uh, and uh, so they do that. But many times, if you do not manage your affection, you will see that it goes off into realms that can totally destroy your existence. This is what we see in the world. Where there is no Varnashrama, there is no Krishna consciousness, there is no Bhagavad Dharma, there is no education in these aspects. You will see that People are unrestrictedly using their affection. And it turns out into all sorts of things. Krishna very nicely explains in the Bhagavad Gita what happens when you do that. Dhyayato vishayan pumsah sanghaste shupajayate sangat sanjayate kamah kama krodho bijayate kodha krodhat bhavati sammoha Sammohat smriti vipramaha, smriti bramshat buddhi nasho, buddhi nashat pranashyati. I think all of you know this very well. There Prabhupada translates in some places, karma as attachment, not directly as lust. He says it is attachment that brings about anger. There, you know, kama krodo bijayate. Attachment brings uh, lust, and lust brings anger. So you will see here uh, that Bharat Maharaj has got very attached to the deer. It says he kissed the deer. He kept the deer on his chest. He kept the deer close to him when he was going to the toilet, when he was going to take his bath, when he was going to pluck flowers, when he was making the yajna kunda. All the time the deer was with him. He couldn't remain separated from the deer. And this is very unique. It shows how what happens to you if you do not manage your affection and your investment of affection. I know of devotees I've seen devotees in the name of preaching have gone and become very attached or have given too much of affection to some congregational devotee or somebody even got, you know, married and left and then divorced also. They don't manage how to do it. If you're a brahmachari, obviously you shouldn't like go out of your way to show your affection to some mataji. If you're a mataji, you should not go out of your way to show your affection to some brahmachari or to somebody else. You, there are elderly ladies who have shown their affection to somebody younger, thinking that he's like my son, he's like my son, and then something else happens. Something else. This is very common today in this world because nobody is educated on how to manage their affection in a cultured uh, atmosphere of Varnashrama and everything together. There are restrictions on what you can do and what you cannot do. So as Chanakya Pandit says, that you can put your affection on your child from when he's one year old to five years old. You must do that but with no limit, all your affection. But from when, from, from when he's five years old to 15 years old, you must punish him and you must restrict him. You must instruct him for every wrong he does. After he is 15 years old, you must become his best friend. Don't instruct him anymore. Prapte sodeshe varshe putram mitram vadacharet. When he becomes old, you become his good friend. And all the time, the mother is feeling great affection for the child, but she manages her affection. When he is five years old, charat pragnya, she sends him off to the Gurukul. Why is it mentioned there like that? Parenting. 
I don't, you know, fondle him and, you know, get my sense gratification out of the affection that I give him. For a lot of them, my gratification that I get out of the affection is a greater importance to me than the child and its own growth. So the child is looked upon as somebody who gives me my gratification coming out of affection. So I give you all sorts of gifts. I give you everything. I want you to be happy. I hug you. I kiss you. You hang around me. And you say those sweet nothings and everything. It's fine for me. I give you my mobile. I give you my tab. I'll give you everything, whatever you want. Doesn't matter when you ruin your life or whatever it is. I am getting something out of this. And I like that. This is selfish investment of affection. Contrary to that is the instruction that when he's five years old, you send him to the Gurukula. And those days, Gurukula means in the forest. He stays with the Guru. Right? He stays with the Guru and other students. And then he practices austerity. There is discipline. There is punishment. There is learning of the Vedas. There is control of the senses. All this cannot happen if your mom is around showing you great affection and giving you this and that. It needs a different atmosphere. So although the mom is uh, very much attached to the child, she can come and see the child once in a while in the school. She can come and show her affection and love. But he's getting trained in a different way, away from the mom. Right? It's managed very well. And then he comes back home. He's 25 years old. He's taken his education. He gets married. He has children. And his mom enjoys so much that he has grandchildren and he has a wife. And she's very intimately related in a very mature way with his family. He has his own individuality. He has affection for his mom. He has affection for his wife, for his children. It's all about affection, the family. It's managed very well in that design. Right? If we didn't do that, you can see what's happened today. I, I counsel a lot of the members in our community, even otherwise from different places. I remember about a year, a year and a half back, I had a girl, very intelligent girl, done very uh, good amount of education and life, working, gave up her job because her husband who was going to get married said, I would prefer that you're at home. And uh, she was chanting a few japa rounds. Little did she know what she was walking into. Because the boy had a mother. A very uh, well-educated mom. Who had a strange psychological problem. Of feeling that this girl has come into my son's life. And uh, she's stealing the time of my son away from me. And they both were in love, the boy and the girl, actually. They like each other very much, which is a very healthy thing. Young and, uh, uh, and she took it very differently. She looked at the girl as an interference in her relationship with the boy. And the boy could not manage the affection between his mother and him and what he had within. He chose to go towards the mother and neglect his wife. And after one or two years of such living, he asked his wife to go back. She was in America and he go back to India. Um, and for some reason she came after that, he never called her back. And there was a divorce. And she was telling me everything that there was absolutely no reason for a divorce. There's absolutely no reason. It's just the mom. It's just the mom convinced the boy that's highly possessive of the son. Such a strange thing. All these things occur in Kali Yuga a lot. And quite a few of such cases where the mom actually overpowers the relationship the son has with his wife and family. And sometimes the son and the family will move out of the house and take up their own house elsewhere. Because this is too much. I can't handle it. And then the mom is dejected and, and he comes and sees her once in a while. And I can't manage it. But he has to take a decision that I can't stay with you. You interfere with my life and my children and my wife and what I invest in her, which is important to me in my life. 
So managing this affection has become quite a thing nowadays. I have a case of another lady who uh, wants to give motherly affection to one of the boys selectively to such a great extent that it became a problem. Uh, so managing our affection is important. And in Varnashrama, it is done very well, nicely. Here you will see Bharata Maharaj could not manage his affection. Even though he was a great king, and even though he was known to be renounced, uh, he had shown that he could renounce, uh, and he had uh, given an example of his life. But he became a victim to unbridled affection that he showed towards a deer. Of course, it's given there that you know, Bharata Maharaj enjoyed it because he had good karma and his good karma manifested and uh, gave him great hindrance to his progress in spiritual life. And he got waylaid completely. So I'm using this as an example of managing your affection and being very cautious of how we invest our affection in people. The other thing is, you may have affection for people and it turns into attachment and then becomes unmanageable and it goes to a greater extent and then you're forced to do something in your life which you normally would not like to do or should not have done and then you find yourself in a position which is not very comfortable for you and for your spiritual life. So for devotees, this is a telling lesson, Bharata Maharaja's story that you have to be careful. Prabhupada keeps saying in the purport, you have to be very cautious. A person has to be very cautious in a spiritual life. You can't go around giving your affection freely to anybody, every, everybody and every other thing also. Uh, and later regret it, like Bharata Maharaj did. When Bharata Maharaj came into the body of a deer, that's when he understood what he has done and why he is wrong. It took him uh, another lifetime of a body, in a, of a deer's body, to realize that what a huge mess I made of my spiritual life. All because of affection for this little deer. The small deer walked into my life and completely destroyed everything. Completely destroyed everything I had renounced. I was a sannyasi in the forest. And this could happen to me. Because of a deer. It didn't require a beautiful woman like, you know, Rambha, Kilotama, Menaka. Menaka came to Vishwamitra and spoiled his meditation and everything. But Bharata Maharaja's meditation was spoiled very insidiously by a deer. Just a small deer. And he had to leave the deer and pass away. Alone in the forest. Now who is going to protect the deer? But his feeling was, who will protect the deer? All that was excuses. He was indulging his affection. We tell all sorts of stories and indulge our affection and enjoy it very subtly. But the mind tells you all sorts of stories to rationalize your unnecessary affection or ill-placed affection. And you go ahead and believe those stories. I am doing it because what will happen to the deer? In the middle of the forest, tigers will attack, lions will attack, and it's such a tender little thing as though you're looking after all the deers who are born like this and are hanging out in the forest. You're not in charge of all those. Krishna is in charge. But you took over Krishna's job, and you, uh, all that is hiding behind that is excuses, but you are indulging your affection. You're enjoying it, and it's very subtle. It is so subtle that even you don't know what you're doing. Even you don't know what you're doing. So he became mad with attachment for the deer. And he got the body of a deer. And after that, he realized, now I can't do anything else. There's no more deer. There's no more me showing affection. I am myself in the body of a deer. How horrible to find yourself in the body of a deer and you're of such exalted consciousness. It's a very horrible experience. But he went through it. And he had hard lessons in spiritual life. But he took it and he matured in his Krishna consciousness as Jadabharat. And you will see that in his 
wonderful conversation with Maharaj Rahugana, you'll see to what level he has become firmly fixed in Krishna. But sometimes we need an experience like this in order for us to realize how to place our affection properly. Sometimes by your intelligence, you can understand by reading Bharata Maharaj's pastime, you know what to do and what not to do, how to indulge in art. So that's one example. Similarly, you have the example of Draupadi and Kunti. Draupadi's example is a great example. It's completely different. Draupadi had her five sons murdered by Ashwatthama. And she went through intense pain that a mother can go through. Seeing her beautiful children mutilated, you know, completely murdered. And she was definitely very disappointed and very revengeful. But when Ashwatthama came, she managed her emotions so wonderfully. She did what is dharmically correct. She didn't want to punish Ashwatthama. I don't want to go into the details of that. The thing you must have read it in the first canto. It's a wonderful discussion uh, on, on the Pandavas and Krishna discussing Draupadi's desire uh, to have him pardoned and mildly uh, punished. So Kunti Devi also, she prays to Krishna in her stuti, saying that I want the affection I have to the Pandavas severed. I want it to be cut. Gangevaukam Udanvati. I want my love to flow towards you, my affection to flow towards you only. Just like the Ganges rushes and gushes to the sea. I wanted to have no impediment. Right now, the Pandavas were my sons, are posing an impediment to my devotion to you. Krishna very happily takes that prayer in and he is blessing Kunti because she is expressing herself that I have affection for the Pandavas and she's making no bones about it. Naturally, I will have affection. They are my children. So sometimes people think that when we read all these things, we should become like a piece of stone with no affection um, or be steel framed in our heart. No, you must have affection. It's legitimate. It's needed for your child's growth. But you must know how to manage that affection. It's not black or white. It's actually gray. It's about managing an affection. A yogi, Krishna explains, is one word, yukta hara viharasya, yukta cheshtasya karmasu, yukta swapna babhodasya, yogo bhavati dukkaha. He's explaining that one who manages neither too much nor too less of eating and sleeping. Similarly, and each one it differs, what's the right size for me? Similarly, a devotee knows what affection level can he handle without tipping over. And what is needed for the child? What is needed in a community? How much of affection should a person uh, give to the community members? What do they ask for? How to manage it? How to actually uh, make them understand what they can expect and what they cannot expect? I'm a community head as a sannyasi, and uh, I deal with all sorts of people. I deal with grahasthas who have problem within themselves. I deal with children who come to me and speak about what their parents did to them. I deal with wives who come and complain about the husband. I deal with husbands who complain about the wives. I deal with, you know, congregational members having problems with one group and the other group. And, you know, you, and it's all people who are actually wonderful. They have all invested affection. And it's all about managing affection, getting attention, giving attention. All of them are wonderful because devotional life is about investing in love of Krishna. How will you invest in your love of Krishna if you did not have love for Krishna's devotees? But then how do we manage that properly? If it goes excessively to another side, this way, that way, it creates an imbalance and a disturbance. So this managing of affection so that it is fruitfully 
uh, moving our, our whole community members and ourselves towards love of God. That's a very important thing. We must never let our affection go into deep attachment and mad attachment and do all sorts of crazy things, which is difficult for the community, which is difficult for family, which is difficult for you and for your own goal of life. That's important to know. Uh, Kunti Devi managed it very well. She actually prayed to Krishna, help me manage this. My affection for the Pandavas, standing in the way of my devotion. Bharata Maharaj did not manage it well. He did amazing things. He was in Bhava Bhakti and he blew it at a completely different place. Of course, it's too exalted a, Uh, you know, event and you should not scale it down and think and compare yourselves with Bharata Maharaj. Bharata Maharaj definitely is a very special person for Krishna. Prabhupada says that Bharata Maharaj was punished for unnecessarily indulging his affection in the deer. It was not necessary for him to do that. But he was careless. He was not vigilant. So we have capacity for investing our affection, especially women folk they have a greater opportunity and a easier way for investing their emotion and their attachment and their affection. They have to do that carefully. And all of them know that very well, uh, deeply inside. Men turn out to be definitely a little more, you know, cold, uh, analytical and uh, whatnot. So sometimes they are on the other end of the spectrum. They are so cold and so, you know, emotionless uh, and have no, you know, uh, sense of uh, relationship. And sometimes you see men becoming excessively emotional in Kali Yuga and women becoming the other side. We have all sorts of permutations and combinations in Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga, you see many things happening. But as a devotee, a person should learn how to manage what is required, how much is required, and how much is permitted and what is not permitted. Okay. I want uh, to leave you with this little uh, discussion for today. I will now pitch in if you have any questions. I will, oh, there's one slide. Maybe I should show you this. So with Bharata Maharaj, we had attention, turn into affection, into attachment, and then into madness. If you don't control and manage your affection, which is very vital and important in human society between human beings and what to speak of between devotees, if you don't manage it properly, uh, the affection that turns into attachment can actually go completely off. Uh, unmanageably off. And attachment is another big story. We'll talk about that in the next session. Okay. Righto. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, I just open up for a little discussion if you have any discussion. Oops. Yeah. Uh, right. Rajeshwar Garunga Das. And uh, Rasa Leela Devidasi, and then Ambika, and then Namrata Agarwal, and uh, Anarpita, and Mahashringa, in that order. Okay. Shoot. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Sanatana. Yeah. Maharaj, uh, I'd like to know about, uh, like, uh, Drup you uh, gave an example of uh, Drupadi and also um, Bharat Maharaj. So Bharat Maharaj was in bhav, bhav, in, the, in the level of bhav. So that means in the level of bhav, so definitely he surrendered to Krishna. And so, but still he, he couldn't manage um, his uh, affection. But uh, in case of Draupadi, Draupadi, I don't know what, what was the level of, uh, I mean, uh, in devotion, but um, he was, uh, you know, he surrendered to Krishna. She surrendered, surrendered to Krishna. So, I mean, I cannot understand that both are in the, I mean, in the elevated stage, but still one uh, could manage the affection, but other could not. So, could you please explain this one? Well, that is individuality. Prabhupada explains that Bharata Maharaj in the stage of Bhava has unnecessarily indulged in the deer. 
which other means any time i can do any of these things because i'm an individual that's why people talk about this in terms of fall down from the spiritual world how can you fall down once you are in the spiritual world the same reason is how can bharat maharaj fall down if he is in bhava bhakti well you can but bharat maharaj's fall down is not like that type of a fall down right it is different it is just proper explain it's a rap on the wrist hey watch out you have a little rap sometimes you know you give a kid a small tap and say get up get up go do your homework he understands it's a mild rap so bharat maharaj singh is something like that and krishna managed it krishna was in charge because bharat maharaj is a very exalted devotee the thing is krishna is in charge and he is training his wonderful child how to be fully involved it's not that you fell down for good and you can never rise up again it's not that type of a fall down for draupadi uh, her management of uh, her uh, love for her children and her disappointment and everything it was very strenuous i'm sure the fadraupadi the management was more to do with what is the use of doing anything now it will just be revengeful and it will affect the mother of ashwatthama the same way it has affected me i will become the reason for giving her also misery why should i do that okay was very intelligent in saying that no i will not do this that means it's like you know taking your attachment and then disappointment and then taking it further with revenge and um buddhina shat prankshiti as it mentioned about with doing something completely off which she did not do which means she managed very well so also kunti devi managed very well she stood right up to the end this this is the meaning of reality reality means it's not black and white always it's grayish achintya bheda bheda tatva means it's not this or that it could be this and that it goes very nicely together we have to do what is necessary from time to time accordingly and understand the situation so the difference is that propert says bharat maharaj did not uh, i mean need not have invested in the deer but he did it out of his own choice that's a problem and draupadi and kunti did not do it they managed it well it could be even bharat maharaj so what everybody can make a mistake all right The next is Ras Lila. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisance. Hare it Krishna. was such wonderful, uh, ex- uh, like whatever you explained, it was just like uh, reality of this Kali Yuga, <laughs> very, uh, very, very close to Kali Yuga. So I have a question that sometimes I have heard devotees saying that I have spiritual attachment with the opposite sex. can you please explain what is that spiritual attachment i really don't know because i didn't hear it <laughs> i didn't hear the person saying it to me but i'll explain <laughs> that <laughs> that's one of those that's one of those things you can be behind like i mentioned to you earlier you can hide behind certain rationalization and indulge your affection yes. because it's gratifying you very subtly so people give all sorts of explanations it's the greek philosophy that speaks about platonic love i think that's a type of thing in in the western philosophy they speak about platonic love uh, plato has explained that that you my love with that person is not physical it's not material it is spiritual and all that yeah, yeah. but that yeah. is that is indulged only by people who are on that platform to assume that i am on that platform itself is something strange and then to express that i have a spiritual thing is even stranger right neither do the gopis say anything like that that i am having spiritual love with krishna and all they don't even bother to say it they just completely overcome we'll talk about that in the next session about what really attachment is what it should be so you should not mirror you should not 
uh, map some other higher uh, experience into your life prematurely but this is one of those cases where i say my love for that person is spiritual how do you know yeah who say so <laughs> who say so how do you know it's just yeah. your mind telling you stories and rationalizing it yeah. you have to be very careful you have to be very very careful mama maya duratyaya right so we should be honest sincere careful we should carefully grow our devotion to krishna and these are all weeds very subtle weeds yes right at the same time it doesn't mean somebody does not have spiritual love for somebody but mostly in this material world it's not so easy to do that okay right i hope that helps you ras leela yeah thank you uh, so much thank you so much uh namrata and or ambika and then namrata and then mahashinga and anarpita hare krishna thank you maharaj uh, for, for the wonderful value class um, very important topic actually because uh, one notices that one is affectionate and one is attached to friends and people around as well <clears throat> but i wanted to ask about this uh, situation when uh, we see that devotees i mean i myself as well of course associate uh, and it's like the main purpose to share affection with other devotees and so on and the actual i mean of course maybe the realization is not enough for something else so then it's a very wonderful time with friends maybe kirtan maybe piece of cake things like that that are very pleasurable and for sense gratification as well so uh like and i think that ladies especially they need that in the beginning so when does this become like essential that uh we really restrict ourselves from see it actually becomes what you're saying when you lose your sadhana when you lose your focus on chanting of the holy name and the importance and the central importance to that then you know that you're going off track bharat maharaj stopped doing his sacrifices stopped doing his spiritual things and he went ahead and kept on indulging in that the warning is my main purpose of having renounced my kingdom and my family and my wealth and treasury and my whole everything coming here is not for falling in love with a deer isn't it that intelligence should always affect you what am i doing crazy chuck it off but it didn't occur in bharat maharaj it's very strange <laughs> so many times uh, like you rightly said this is great fun one on the one side and it is definitely the real juice and the rasa the association of devotees you share prasadam you do kirtan together you do all that but you know you have to balance it with serious indulgence and in reading proper's books and discussing it chanting properly if at any time those things are getting disturbed because of your affection or something that you have indulged in then you know it's crossing the line that's the immediate indication that you can have for you know persons like us in the physical world and it happens and you can see it will actually happen it's very clear it's very clear you lose your focus in chanting you'll skip a few mangala aarties you'll find it's okay what is there type of thing uh, you know you know that time is happening to you okay i hope that helps uh, ambika ji right thank you namrata agarwal hari krishna maharaj please accept my humble obeisances hari krishna thank you maharaj for such a wonderful class it actually made me churn so many things within my heart so actually maharaj uh, it's like i'm i have a nature which is very affectionate i'm generally very affectionate towards everyone be it relatives or anyone and i have got the service of uh, mentoring and counseling young girls so these girls you know they come like they are very love starved and exploited in this world so i feel 
I had this belief that I should give my relationship and love to them. That will keep them more attached to Krishna consciousness rather than just philosophy. Uh, but in, eventually, like obviously, I am not getting possessive about it. But the girls are getting too attached to me. So how much is too much? I don't know. I mean, please guide me. Well, that's a good thing. What you're doing is a preaching strategy. You must remember that. You are actually utilizing it as a preaching strategy to get them attached to Krishna. So at some point of time, these things are so subtle that you may fall into the trap of thinking they are getting attached to me, and that is nice. But it's your duty to get them attached to Prabhupada's books and Prabhupada's teachings in his life and to Krishna. If you fail to do that, you will actually be carried away like Bharata Maharaj maybe. To put it very brisk, I mean crisply to you. So many devotees do this. They get carried away by the importance they get. And such type of things are best balanced by having other types of association. You should not always hang around your uh, younger you know, girls whom you're preaching to. You should balance it with senior association. You should balance it with peer association. Uh, if you simply do too much of this, you can get derailed. Okay? And uh, it's a night, you must, like I said, you must remember it's a preaching strategy. I'm putting myself in place and giving my affection and love to them so that they'll get love for Krishna. Right? They have to be directed to Krishna. Just like I told you, uh, you have to send your child to Gurukul when you're five years old, when the child is five years old. And the mother feels that. I mean, you go to, the, uh, to, go to kindergarten school and see the first day you put all the kids into school. It's a mess. Every kid is crying. And the mother is also crying because she has to separate the kid. But she knows she has to do it. And the school teacher is just dragging the kid. Don't worry, it'll all be all right. Come inside and bah, old classroom is crying. And all the mothers are standing outside. They're not even going back home. You see this everywhere, isn't it? And then over a period of time, after about three weeks, four weeks, there's no more crying. The kids have started enjoying each other's company. And in fact, after two months, they are running to school. They don't want you. They want the friends. They want the fun, the games. The teacher has become very important for them. And then you know that, fine, it's managed. Right? Although you have affection for the child, you know this is good for her. So you should let go at some time. So similarly, your uh, people you are preaching to, you should let go in such a way they get exposed to others like you. And they can invest their love for them also. In this way, you are safe for your spiritual life. They get to meet others. These things people don't do. They said, no, 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 they are all mine. I am preaching to them. They belong to me. They belong to me. I give them the, all these things happen. You know what happens. You know, the, I don't have to mention it. So these are all natural checks. Just let go. Krishna is looking after them. And you'll be always available to them. And be more broad. The, if you get broad in preaching, there's less danger. Okay? I hope that helps you. Thank you very much, Munaraj. Hari Bol, Hare Krishna. Uh, Mahashringa Prabhu, it's already past time, so yes. keep it quiet, short. Is time there, Maharaj? Well, I don't mind giving time till another two minutes. Thank you, Maharaj. Wonderful subject. Uh, only concern because it requires another class also. Uh, this is a uh, lot has to be understood. Srila Prabhupada, he showed unlimited affection to the devotees. And due to this affection, the devotees could overcome uh, unimaginable weaknesses. They were really attached. There was affection, there was attachment also. And we are still feeling that attachment to our seniors, uh, gurus and senior Vaishnavas. And that is what is uh, uh, keeping us and moving us forward. So 
but then today you have uh, told a very fine line and how to manage it and you know etc so this is very uh, very delicate and confusing means how to balance and uh, where is the where is the you know stop button or something like that well your question is very very general uh, and i think we have done some fundamental work today and get some understanding and churn it in your head prabhupad knows how to manage those things very very well he was very expert he knew how to chastise his disciple at the same time also so affection many of us can show only affection cannot actually do certain things that will jeopardize or endanger our affection that is you are afraid that you lose yourself or you will suffer a loss proper was very good at balancing these things uh senior devotees who could take it he would give them pretty good chastisement at the same time show affection with younger devotees who are just coming up he would mostly show only affection and love you can see all these distinctions he will have the senior devotees uh, rule and give instructions to the juniors and his role was that's how it should be as a community head as a person who's a worldwide founder of acharya so he had a system in place which organically came into place because of the culture of krishna consciousness which was very natural to him sometimes we don't have that varnashrama culture existing so we have to talk about affection as a separate topic and do a seminar and a workshop on it because in kaliyuga it's all like you know these are all natural things everybody does in a family and everything they don't need to be trained comes naturally but this is kaliyuga you have to teach people how to how to sleep how to eat how to take a bath how to show your affection it's a very low age where basic human functions have to be taught so what to speak of other things you know i have i have here a, a place called hush you can come and sleep every day there they'll put you to sleep because many guys can't sleep so if you go to hush you pay you know few thousand rupees a day and they'll give you some perfumes and a hot water bath and some uh, nice tea and some light this thing in a massage or something and put you to sleep great <laughs> i mean you don't know how to sleep you don't know how to show your affection you don't know how to manage this kaliyuga syndrome so what to do that's how it is okay An- anarpita you have exactly one second hari krishna mara janvatnam thank you so much for wonderful uh, lecture very enlightening manacha i have a uh, two question here my first question is a uh, uh, very nicely shown the picture here that uh, affection how to manage the affects uh, affection it is required to manage but uh, as per the the mental state of kunti maharani and dropadi that we are not able to understand what kind of mindset they have so they could manage in their situation while they were the mother uh, they have lot of affection with their child even though they could manage in that situation and at the end kunti marani is saying that uh, oh krishna please take my all the affection in your lotus feet and how she could uh, manage this this idea i don't have this uh, this type of strategy we know that we have to do but how to do that i am not uh, able to understand this naturally naturally you'll not understand because you are not kunti devi you can't be in her shoes okay you can only learn according to your consciousness and your requirement maybe krishna has the understanding what kunti devi because he is paramatma in the heart of kunti devi and she has her mental state she has expressed very well in that kunti stuti namaste purusham tvadyam ishwaram prakrite param her very famous prayers she has expressed that i am just a woman how will i understand this and 
how will i be able to manage my affection for the pandavas i you know you saved us you protected us you are everything for me she expressed her entire mental state in that if you want to know of course we can't call it a mental state we can call it a devotional state uh, but within that is involved her emotions her feelings towards krishna and everything so we should read that and get inspired it's not that we it's not that we want to imitate kunti but we should take this principle the principle is that it varies different situations vary for different people everybody commonly goes through certain things those common principles we can understand and then specific to yourself is your own game you have to have, have to take and apply it it may not be the same like others like your neighbor like your next door person it will be different each one's life is different it need not be exactly the same but the principles we take and we apply your management of your affection may need some different thing but basically the bottom line is don't give up your spiritual practices and your sadhana should not be affected because we are sadhakas we are not managing affection like the gopis were managing that we will discuss in the next session they were completely lost in managing their affection for krishna and why there's other reasons for it that type of attachment is very different but obviously we are not like that at all we need to materially manage it and spiritually manage it our situation is different so we should act according to our situation everybody's life is unique uh, and uh, only you will know best what it is you okay thank you hari krishna jai shila prabhu pad ki thank you so much have a great breakfast if you haven't had one yet and i think you you all, you all look all of you look wrapped up here in south india it's warm and the sun is shining it's a little chilly in the morning but i took off my uh, little chai this thing everything and i feel perfectly all right um i hope you have a great time and stay free from omicron uh, another living being is after us uh, stay free and uh, have a great breakfast and enjoy life and don't invest too much of affection om tat sat hari krishna hari maharaj thank you so much hari. for this uh, very wonderful presentation very practical hari, hari. um really very very necessary actually for the devotees because this is like ongoing daily experience the experience of affection attraction uh, this is very very so thank you so much i think everybody would have gained a lot today my affection for all of you is growing i have to be careful now oh <laughs> cut off maraj hi krishna <laughs>